Thanks, Dal Strong, for sponsoring this video. Parmigiano Reggiano, the best cheese in the world, everybody. I don't care what anyone else says because that is something extremely special. I had the pleasure of going to Italy and actually going to where they make it in Parma, Italy, and it was one of the most incredible experiences of my life. Today, we're gonna be learning even more by reacting to this awesome video. Ooh. That is just satisfying. Real Parmesan cheese can cost over a thousand dollars. Let me just stop that right there because I don't know when this video came out because nowadays it is a lot more expensive. A Parmesan cheese wheel, if you buy it here in the United States, with shipping and everything can go over $2,500. If it was a thousand dollars, that would be a miracle. But today it's a lot more expensive. It's more than double the price of your average cheddar. That right there is an experience that not most people have. When I was in Parma, they offered to open a wheel for me right there. And this is what happened. This hook knife is going to engrave a circular line in order to have a route to follow, to insert knives later. And now it's starting breaking the rind with the show knives. No, then then the hair can start going inside. Yeah. Oh, he gives it a little bit of time yeah. for the air to go in. Yeah. That's the mistake I made. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to go right away. <laughs> ah. And also the distance between the knives. No, then then it the makes a difference. The hair goes inside equally all around the shape. Ah, you see? There's a trick. Because it's the air that breaks the, the, the cheese, mm. not the knives. Ready? ready? Oh, we are very ready. Oh, he slams that. Wow. Impressive. The skill that this man has is incredible because most people, if you ever seen them opening a cheese wheel, they have a real hard time, everybody. It is not easy. I tried it myself and it takes some practice, but he opens like it's nothing. And trying the cheese for the very first time completely just opened, it is a similar experience of you trying a Japanese Wagyu A5 for the first time. It is indescribable. A wheel of Parmesan cheese takes at least one year to age. 131 gallons of milk to make and it can only be made in a small area in northern Italy. Yep. That right there that you see, you cannot experience it, everybody, because when you walk inside of the cheese room like that, the first thing that hits you is the smell. And it's what stand out the most for me on that entire experience. An average of 3.6 million wheels are produced each year and the industry is worth a nigh popping 2.2 billion euros. Damn! That's a lot of money. Every single cheese wheel is made in a restricted area in northern Italy, in yep. the region of Emilia Romagna. See there, that's where I was, everybody. When I had the pleasure of going to Italy, I went to a few places and I went to the northern because I wanted specifically to visit the Parmigiano Reggiano factory. So I was in Parma to do that, but I also went to Bologna and Moderna. Another wonderful experience I had there was one of the most expensive vinegars in the world, which is a hundred years old. I made a whole video about it, but I'll tell you one thing, Italy. I love you and I can't wait to come back. So how does this turn into this? And what makes it so special? We went to a dairy in Parma, Italy to find out. Now it is expensive, but it's not that bad any longer, everybody. It used to be a lot more pricey. I hate when people buy the pre-graded cheese that is green. If you compare that one with a real Parmigiano Reggiano, first of all, there's no comparison. It's so much better and so much more worth it. There are only 329 dairies in the whole world that are certified to produce Parmesan cheese and they're all based in the same area where the monks used to make it. Yep. In fact, it isn't even possible to make the exact same product outside of the production area. The same thing was when I went to the Culatello factory, which is a very special ham from Italy. And just like the Parmesan wheel, when you go inside of that ham factory, everybody, where they have these hams that have been hanged for years and years and years, but here's why you can't replicate it even if you try. Turns out it's all about three good bacteria that only grow in this specific territory. Yep. 
it takes 131 gallons of milk to make one wheel of Parmesan cheese. So funny enough, in that specific factory I went, around it there was no milk to buy because they just buy everything, everybody, from the farmers. If you go to Italy, make sure you buy milk somewhere else before you go to Parma, okay? The two milks are transferred in these copper vats along with fermented whey, a sort of sourdough, and then rennet, an enzyme which gives the milk a yogurt-like texture. Now they use rennet to make incredible Parmigiano Reggiano and in most factories that's what they use. Another thing that we use in Brazil in order to make cheese is actually lemon or lime, as something acidic. Basically it makes the milks completely separate from the curds to the whey. That's something you can try if you've never made cheese before in your life. I highly recommend everybody. The cheese master will then split the milk into curds using this tool called Spino. Wow, take a look at that. That's incredible. Now, one of these big copper buckets will produce two Parmigiano Reggiano wheel. Do you remember the three good bacteria? Well, they're not alone. Other bacteria, bad bacteria, might have joined the party. Yeah. Cooking the milk ensures that only the good bacteria can continue the journey, while the others are kicked out. When cooked, the curd travels all the way to the bottom of the vat, where it's left to settle. 45 minutes later, here it is. Wow! Mass of curd, weighing 220 pounds. Wow! That is incredible, everybody. And the smell, it reminds me of the smell of the factory. Unbelievable. This mass is the equivalent of two cheese wheels and is split carefully by workers with linen clothes. And I absolutely love that Italy is maintaining its culture by not mass producing machines, just like we make cars nowadays, where they have everything done by robots. Everything is handmade the way it's supposed to be, everybody. That's why it's so good. But before moving forward, I want to thank today's sponsor, Dowstrong. Let me tell you about their incredible Father's Day sale. You don't want to skip this one. Father's Day is just around the corner. And that means barbecue and grill season is officially here. And what better way to show your appreciation for Father's Day than by supercharging his grilling game. I've been using Dowstrom knives and barbecue tools for years. And I gotta say, I absolutely love them. Beautiful, razor sharp, lasting professional quality, the perfect gift for someone that loves to cook. Pretty much everything you might need for barbecue and grilling season, you'll find it at Dowstrom. And the best part, Dowstrong is running a huge Father's Day sale with up to 20% off knives and tools that are never discounted. Chef's knives, slicing and carving knives, boning and fillet knives, incredible pit master knives, as well as heavy duty show stealing annihilators and obliterator cleavers. Imagine his face when he sees you got him one of these. Plus, tons of incredible steak knives to enjoy your meal, as well as knives, choose from specialty barbecue and grilling tools like meat forks and claws, and aprons to keep you protected from the pit. This really is once in a lifetime opportunity to get these incredible products at a discounted price. And if there's one thing I know about Dowstrong, is that when they have a sale, things sell fast. So get yours now and don't miss out. Out. Head on over to Dowstrong and take advantage of this incredible sale. Thanks Dowstrong for sponsoring this video. Now let's get right back to it. At 8 p.m. the cheese is covered with this stencil which will engrave the logo Parmigiano Reggiano. Yep, that's when it this makes it official. The mark of origin used to tell customers that this is the real thing, made in the same restricted area where monks used to live in the Middle Ages. Each wheel is also given an ID. It's this plaque made from milk protein, which contains information about where it was produced and when. The stencil is removed four days later and the wheels are praised into brines, where they stay completely plunged for about 19 days. Now that brine has a little bit of salt, everybody. That's why it's there. This process helps to form the cheese rind, which acts as a barrier for the cheese. And this is when the maturation process begins. That is one of the most incredible experiences in my life right there. Going inside of that, it's just awesome. Wheels remain relatively untouched for one year. After that, a master grade they will respect them. Now in this video, you cannot hear it, everybody, the differences between sounds between a wheel that has been just started aging and the one that has been aging for a long time. The audio is bad on this video here, but check it out. So this is one year old cheese. It sounds dense. Three years old. Wow, I 
feel like a cheese maker. <laughs> Six years old. Wow, it sounds more like wood. Eight years old. Wow. Very similar to the wood. Yes. 17 years old. <laughs> There's no moisture inside. No. There's zero. This is crazy. This one must be worth a lot of money. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. We cannot try that one. No. <laughs> Right there at that specific moment, I felt like I was a cheesemaker from Italy. It was an awesome experience. The average maturation is two years, but some wheels are aged as long as 10 years to achieve a stronger, nuttier taste. I tried every single one of them and the ones that are just aged for too long wasn't for me. <laughs> I guess just like my crazy experiments where I age steaks for a year, two years, four years up to four years i'm insane right and uh turned out those steaks were not that good and at least for me i didn't prefer the parmigiano reggiano that was aged for too long a longer maturation period makes the price go higher that's why a stravecchio very old parmesan that has matured for three years will be sold on the market for an average of 13 wow. euros that's about 15 us dollars per pound Look at that, this everybody. High price wow. Means that there is now a black market of counterfeit Parmesan products. Italy has been struggling with fake products for years. In fact, the problem is so big that the fakes have become an industry of their own that is estimated to be worth 100 billion euros. That's wow. about 113 billion US dollars with Parmigiano Reggiano being one of the biggest brands fighting copycats. That's the thing, you can find it in so many different places, the fake stuff. Don't buy the fake stuff, everybody. Get the real deal. How are you gonna know? All you have to do is remember the marks on the rind. That's all, everybody. That's what makes it real. And trust me, it tastes completely different. So, how do you recognize a real Parmesan cheese? This do is an important this thing. The stencil? That's a solid indication that the cheese yes. is legit. If that's not visible, the packaging should contain Parmigiano Reggiano's official logo and the EU's protected designation yes. of origin. That is an incredible video. I highly recommend you trying Parmigiano Reggiano, the real deal, because it's not as expensive as you might think, everybody. Don't buy that green cheese can piece of crap. It's not the same thing. That's not even like cheese. That is the most offensive thing you can say to an Italian after pineapple on pizza. Okay. I miss you, Italy. It was one of the most incredible experiences of my life. I cannot wait to go back. Let me know in the comments down below what you would like me to do in Italy because I'm coming back to visit my good friend Vito and we're going to make some incredible videos there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.